Good morning. Hey, Seattle. As always, it's your girls, Jasmine and Shantae. Welcome to another Thursday morning and another episode of The Way with Jazz and Tay. We'll be bringing you lots of laughs and class to get you ready for the day and the weekend ahead. Will it be the way or not the way? Find out and join the conversation. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Welcome to another episode of The Way with Jazz and Tay. It's your girl Jazz and Shantae. And um, it's been a couple weeks since you've heard from us, actually, like live. So um, happy New Year's Eve. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yes, that's right. Oh, my gosh. Yes, we can just about kick this year in the behind. Right. Let's go. Forget all about Peace, it. Peace, 2020. Peace, Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. I'm manifesting only great things. We only have one expectation for 2021, and it's to be better than 2020. And that's setting the bar very low. <laughs> <laughs> very low. <laughs> um, so welcome, first of all. Today we are celebrating our two-year anniversary as a podcast. Like, <laughs> thank you. Yes. So we'll be going down memory lane and recapping a few things, but um, what else can they expect today, Tim? Just the usual. I think we should just go ahead and run into our show, give them our weekly recaps and tell them what we've been doing this holiday season since we haven't been on in a while. And then, you know, get into our icebreaker. Um, Jazz, how have you been? What's been up? Oh, you know, I've been working from home. <laughs> Uh, that's a blessing. I know, I know, right? Everybody else has been working from home, but for me, as far as like officially working from home, it's been like three weeks. Um, that's fun. Um, but the holidays have been, the holidays were lovely. Um, I got to see my mom and my stepdad and a couple of my siblings. Um, and it's just, this year has really made me appreciate my family so much more. And it's, it's crazy too, because it's like throughout the year, I've, I've seen family members like here and there, but we usually have so many gatherings and we all, and they all, everybody usually shows up to the gatherings. And so it's been weird not having everyone together and around, but, um, Christmas was amazing. And then, um, I went to eat out. Uh, at Salty's the other day like I have not been out to eat at dinner in a while because of all of this and outdoor restrictions all that fun stuff uh, but I had this surf surf and turf meal so yeah it was a steak skewer with shrimp skewers and a baby lobster tail on a bed of mashed potatoes and some green beans amazing I literally cleared my plate it was the bomb uh, and I had some margaritas that had me pass out on the couch until like 3.30. So I am amazing. Ready. It was an awesome time. You got to cool <laughs> it on those fishbowl sized versions. Well, it was like, so it, it was funny because I, I had two of them. And then That's the person that I was with kept making them uh, doubles. So technically, all in oh. all, I had about four like shots. With, yeah. Knows? No, I was, yeah. Blame me feeling the, the way person. that I, yeah. Blame it on that. Yeah, right? Because, yeah. yeah, you put it yeah. to your face. No. No. I remember I just woke up sweating. Like, I was so hot on the couch. I was, like, drenched and stuff. Sweating, anyway, sweating all that booze out. Sweating all that booze out. Yeah. <laughs> it was working its way. <laughs> all right. <laughs> With too much, um, we're soaked, too. <laughs> know that all so well. Um, well, yeah, I got to spend uh, Christmas with my family. I actually spent an entire week with them. We went out to Bellingham for about five days before Christmas, and it snowed, and it stuck, and it was beautiful. Like, I'm talking, it looked like a Bob Ross painting out there. I just... I just would like sit at the back sliding door and just peek out there and just stare at it because it was so beautiful. Um, and Josie absolutely loved it as well. It was her first snow and she took to it immediately. It was like hopping around, trying to eat it. It was the cutest thing ever. I love it. Um, actually, really all the dogs liked it. So that was a lot of fun uh, being up there and just being able to kind of like chill out, um, be away, away from the house, get new scenery and all of that. Um, and then Christmas was great. It's always awesome to see my little brother on Christmas Day and how excited he is. Um, it really saves the spirit of Christmas mm. to have a kid around, to be honest. Mm. It just really does. It just Christmas is not like like it was growing up without a kid because yeah. it's like that uh, 
the shock and awe is gone. As an you know? adult, it's completely different. So, for sure. yeah, like, you know, this year I'm I just got to wake up to get a, gifts, honestly. Exactly, at this <laughs> like, point. And look, like, I got a carpet cleaner and I was like, yes. And my stepdad <laughs> is like, she's definitely an adult now. And I'm like, yeah, because who gets excited over getting a carpet cleaner right. other than adults? And, um, but yeah, so like just seeing him excited from like the, the night before to the next day, like the day before he's like, are you excited? No, he's like, are you, is your stomach hurting? And I was like, like, why would my, and he's like, cause tomorrow is Christmas. And I was like, yeah, but man, yeah, man, I'm, uh, I'm in, ex- I have anxiety right now, guy. Like, his, I don't know what so I'm going to get. stomach hurting yeah. because oh, he was yeah. just so he excited. He was just like, Aww. I can't even stand how excited I am. Like the whole day, he's just, I love it. Right. But right. good stress. And yes. I was just like, yeah, buddy, I feel it too. I totally know that feeling. Yes. <laughs> like all day, you're just so like, kind of like on edge because you know, it's like tomorrow. It's just getting closer and closer yes. and closer. And he's not one to go to bed easily. He was like ready for bed at eight o'clock, but it was because he was actually tired from like just being like wired from the fact that yeah, the next day was that was Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, he was not. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, it was also a really great time to see um, my sister, my younger sister, before she goes off to the Air Force. She leaves on January twelfth, <gasps> which is in like That's so what, close. That's so soon. Um. So that's exciting. I'm excited for her to start a new chapter in her mm-hmm. life and to see how this goes for her. So, but it was nice to see her before she leaves. And I hope that we get to do something, you know, like a send off, but I don't know with all this COVID stuff and the restrictions. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I did get a bunch of records for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm my little bin that I'm holding them in. It looks like I'm a real record collector. What are some of the, <laughs> the give me your top three favorites that you got for Christmas. Um, top three faves. I know two of them, I think. Well, top three that I'm the most excited about yes, yes, yes. would be Lena Horn. Mm. I got that from my grandparents. Um, I listened to it actually a lot yesterday and it was pretty smooth. Like, love the entire vibe of that uh, record. So I'm excited. Oh, I forgot about one. So I actually have four. I'm excited about, I got Miles Davis on record mm. and also. And like, it says that it's like one of the like best recorded albums on vinyl or something like I don't know. I'll have to recheck that, but it says that it's like some acclaimed record. So okay, I'm excited okay. about that. Any particular friend- song from that one? No, not not any songs because I don't like I don't know Miles Davis specifically. Mm-hmm. Like I know he's a jazz musician yep. and mm-hmm. all of that. Mm-hmm. But like I don't know any of his music, so I'm just excited to like hear it cuz I know yeah. it's going to be super mm-hmm. crisp and For clean. For the culture. Um and I like jazz music, so that's going to be interesting. Um I'm really excited for I got Prince purple rain nice. yeah yeah, yeah. and it's funny because as i was opening it they gave me two records and i knew they were records because of how they're shaped and of i was course. like i'm gonna try and guess what these are and my first guess was prince and the reason was because i have prince in my amazon cart oh i had the vinyl in my can amazon people see cart. it can people see that i don't think so oh, okay okay um and my mom was like looking crazy because she was like how did she know and I was like it's because I wanted it and I, so I manifested you did that. right <laughs> I was like that's what I wanted and I said like Beyonce's formation album for the other I was like I could have never guessed Miles Davis, Miles Davis. <laughs> um, so those are my top three I also got a Selena album and it's like all of her number one hits so I'm set I'll be in my room for the rest of the for 2021 <laughs> yeah Jazz you might need to check on her from time to time make sure she doesn't pass out right, yeah. <laughs> you right over there you okay <laughs> Super excited. Uh, back to the Selena. Have you seen the mini series? Selena has a... um. Okay. So uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. I've watched some of it. Okay. I watched. I watched a lot of it, but like I also fell asleep. Not to say that the series isn't good. I just fell asleep. You just um, watched it too where I was right. in the moment. Okay. But uh, I can't wait to like rewatch it with clear eyes because I like the new storyline. <laughs> clear <we're> eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, I like how you position that. that. Were, um, uh, about that little special thing, the Selena special. Oh, um, so prior to them dropping this on Netflix, they did like a. Um, It was like a live showing. Um, And so they had people who are super Selena fans come on and basically um, still to this day, Selena fans. They gave us like a sneak peek preview of some of the show. And I was a part of that. And we also did a sing along to Camola Flor. And uh, it's like this. It's like this karaoke screen and you could see like thousands of people. And if you look very close. 
<laughs> very, very, very close. You could see me. Yeah. <laughs> no, isn't that <laughs> like so cool? A very quick second, but it was a lot of fun. Um, it was extremely like moving to be a part of because there were people that you know only spoke Spanish so there was like an English uh, speaking person and then Spanish speaking translator and you know watching the people who were um, speaking Spanish like they were crying after watching like the sneak previews that they gave us it was just really moving to be a part of it she like really I was just honored to so be much there to them like yeah the, the Mexican culture and all and everything like yeah um, thought it was beautiful. Would do anything for Salinas. <laughs> anything <laughs> for Salinas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've got some exciting news to share. So much. I know, right? There's so much going <laughs> on, you guys. We already are saying kicking. We're already kicking 2020 to the curb because look at look at us. All right. Yeah. Um, you can now catch us every Tuesday from 10 to 1030 p.m. for a live weekly hot take on Rainer Avenue Radio. So this segment is a spinoff of our Hot Topics segment, except this time we'll be looking to our listeners to provide some insight. We will be looking for current events and trending topics and giving our unsolicited opinions and advice. So tune in because your girls are getting unfiltered. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Okay, now let's go ahead and jump into our icebreaker. I don't know why, but this song makes me dance like every single time. I wish I had a ponytail. Oh, we whip it. Hey. That could swing I to that. I whip my hair back and forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we figured it would only be right to end the year by playing our favorite icebreaker ever, which is Heads Up. And like, literally we play this game and just like out of nowhere, I'll be like, uh, do you guys wanna play Heads Up? Sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> it's just like, a great way to pass the time. It is, it's so fun. You always get a good laugh. I always end up crying because I'm laughing so hard. Um, but they actually put out a special edition pack and it's 2020. And in parentheses, they have just the good stuff. So don't worry guys, we're not gonna bring everybody down. <laughs> um, but this is what this is what they've uh, said to us. We're not going to lie. 2020 has been quite the year and we're more than happy to see it go. But we dug deep and compiled a deck full of all the wonderful, entertaining, eye opening moments from 2020. From the earworm that is blinding lights by the weekend to the profound Black Lives Matter movement. Celebrate the best of 2020. OK. I'm excited. Music, I could do that. The best. I just want to know what they've got. I know. We'll see. <laughs> this is going to be their version of what the best is. Let's go. Okay. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Or do I mean, okay. We're going to count down. Three, two, one. Oh, it's this show on Netflix. Kissing Booth. Uh, not the first one, but Booth. Uh, the What's comes after one? Two. Uh huh. Just go. You got it. <laughs> the kissing booth too. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, everybody. These are all sold out. It's a new gaming con console. Uh, PS5. Yes. Oh, uh, Euphoria. Skinny girl. Zendaya. Yes. What we've been doing ever since March. Lockdown. What's a? What are we doing though? Working from home. A fourteen day. Like if you have been exposed to someone with COVID. Oh, they, quarantine. There you go. Okay. Um, Dix is one of these. Sonics is one of these. Drive in. Yes. Okay. Football, a uh, football team. Um, and they used to be like named after uh, Native Americans, but they're not, wa they're not the Washington, the Washington, not those ones. Uh, oh. I forgot. What the Kansas City it. Chiefs. I didn't, I wasn't sure how to get you there. Yeah, I wasn't going to guess that one. That's okay. <laughs> it was a good attempt. I don't remember what they renamed Solid themselves. attempt. Solid attempt. Okay, I'm trying <laughs> to figure out why, like, what does the Kansas City Chiefs have to do with 2020? Just well, football? because didn't they win the Super Bowl last year? Or, sorry, this year? Oh, did they? In February. Oh, my gosh. That was this that's right. That was this year. <laughs> That's right. That was before we even got shut down. Oh, uh, you guys, you know what? I shouldn't forget about that because the day that the Super Bowl happened was, I think, the same day that I got my hair cut. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> disaster. Oh, that? that's right. I remember that. It was definitely the same, like, weekend. 
Because oh, it was no. right at the beginning of uh, February, and the Super Bowl was like the second of February. Yeah. I don't even remember watching the Super Bowl. Like I just all. remember halftime. Who? Wait, I don't even. Who, it was J Lo. That's right, and Shakira. Shakira. I, I, I. Okay, so I did watch some parts of the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely weren't gonna miss Shakira. And I know I did. <laughs> we definitely did an episode about that. Yeah, yeah, we definitely did. <laughs> I think we like watched. We made sure we watched the Super Bowl specifically for that. Yeah. Okay, my turn. You ready? Yeah. I'm nervous. Do you see the confetti? There's like confetti. That's cute. Oh, it's a no. Skip it. Okay. Um, this is a type of ice cream. Gelato. Um, and they're super like into social justice causes. Ben and Jerry's. Yes. Oh, shoot. I almost dropped my phone. Um, these people live here and they're married and they're super corny and he plays on the Seahawks. <laughs> Russell Wilson and Sierra. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, Solid. It's something that you do when you're picking. Nope. Skip. Oh. Sorry. Is curtside. Oh, this song became extremely popular. It's by one of my favorite rappers and one of my least favorite rappers. But wow. to, yes. Um, <laughs> how far do you have to dig a grave? Six feet under. Just six yeah. feet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I know this song, but I don't know how to get you to it. Uh, you have a crush on him, and he's very Sean Shawn Mendes. Oh, oh, Harry Styles. No, like, Bad Bunny. Like, yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. Like, um, somebody who's super a uh, Drake. Uh, they're sad pop all the star. time. They're like in their feelings all the time. Justin Bieber. It's a term. Fudge cakes. Simp. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sad. But I was like, they're in their feelings. <laughs> oh my gosh, yo, that was like stressful. I love, love, love your um, description of Sierra and Russell Wilson. <laughs> Sorry, Sierra and Russell, but you, you guys said are they live boring. here and they're married, and I was like, "That's a lot of." I know a lot of people. But then you said something about being corny. Yeah, it was yeah. the corny part. Yeah. That, okay, here's that the sold thing. it. Like they're totally they're, sold it. They're a little bit, a lot of bit corny. I don't know if you guys have recently seen them do their little video for their uh, uh, cologne. Their oh, perfume I have. and cologne set together, and I was like, "Ugh!" It's just okay. So what I don't is, know if I'm bitter or if they're corny. It's one of the two. No, both. you know, you want to know what I think it really is? It's Russell Wilson for me. Is they're trying to do this whole like sex appeal kind of approach with him, and like him being this like sexy thing, and he's just not. He's just not. He's not giving it giving it to me like. Mm. I mean, I guess, you know, in a classic sense, he's conventionally attractive. Yes, you know, he's fit. He's got money. He's not ugly. But this whole sexy thing, <laughs> I'm just not picking it up. Maybe he'll win Sexiest Man Alive next year. Oh, my gosh. No, we're. I'm upset about that. <laughs> who won we it this are, year? Do you know? I don't know who, who, I don't know who got it for this year. Was it Idris Elba? Probably? No, 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 no. Idris Elba got it a while ago. But we were oh, it was going... Michael B. Jordan. That's it. Ah, uh, yeah, that's and it. I'm yes. not upset with it. Right. That was the first because we were still going in on John okay Legend being named sexiest man alive, and I was just like, I don't know. I like, think they like alternate. It's like, ooh, I just kind of like spit everywhere. <laughs> COVID. Oh. I think it's like every other year they give us like truly like everybody thinks this man is sexy, and then the next year they give us somebody who's unconventionally sexy. Right. You know. Okay, yeah. So here's the thing. I will give them this. For the last three years, it has been men of color. Uh, Idris Elba was 2018. John Legend was 2019. Michael B. Jordan was this year. Who was before John Legend? Blake Shelton? Yeah, Blake Shelton. And I think that's when they started to kind of get their stuff together because... Well, before then, it was Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and I definitely agreed with that. Hey, I love him. He's becoming Dwayne Daddy The Rock Johnson. Oh, you God. feel me? Oh, crrr. Um, Anyway. <laughs> He's a big dude. He is. No, that's the thing. Like I love Jack something now. about a big, big old man. Whew. Anyways, as we digress, <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and jump into a quick two to three minute break before we start recapping our last two years. Uh, stay tuned. You guys are listening to The Way with Jazz and Tay. When you say Little Richard died too, guys. Oh! Okay, welcome, welcome back. back. Yeah, right. <laughs> This is the part um, of, yeah. This I feel like I remember that. <laughs> I used to love Little Richard as a kid. It was weird. It Did was he have weird. that one? Two and a fruit Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two and a fruit <laughs> Yeah. Good girl, let me some Molly. Hey. Yeah. Okay. So that was my guy. <laughs> at least his legend lives on in Tutti Fruity. He was 87, so. He'd live a full life. Yeah. Man. 
Uh, welcome back to The Way with Jazz and Tay. Before the break, we recapped our month, really, and our Christmas. Uh, we told you guys what we've been up to, and we also played a round of Heads Up, which has now led us down a rabbit hole of trying to see all the celebrities that passed or left us this year. And it's tragic just reading the list back. You guys, Regis Philbin died this year, too. Oh, my god! In July. <laughs> It's like when it rained, it poured. It's, it was just unreal. You really Seriously. did. No, yeah, it really like, did. And you know what's crazy? Oh, my God. Naya Rivera was this year, too, guys. Okay. We're going to move on. So we're going to move on to something more cheery and bright. <laughs> Thank you. Like us. <laughs> Let's change the topic and just talk about us. Because so we're really we, good at that. We are celebrating our two-year anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> as a podcast. And as you guys know, on. that's a big feat. Two years is a long time. It is to be dedicated to anything. <laughs> it is. Um, so some things that have happened in this year for us, um, we had 23 guests join us on The Way With Jazz and Tay, which is exponentially Lara, more people than the year before. Absolutely. Um, I, I want to say we maybe had three guests last the year before. I, I think so. And it was really kind of like I feel like more towards the end of the year too yeah at that you know yeah and I think it, it a lot of it has to do with now that we're with KKNW we had the space to bring in guests but you know 2020 has also yeah. allowed us uh, everybody had a lot of free time a lot of free time <laughs> and and it's easy to do it virtually all yeah. you have to do is hop on that zoom and we've got somebody from you know different countries different states all over so we had a lot of really great guests. We took um, advantage of that for sure. I'm really happy about that. We also recorded 50 plus episodes this year. Wow. Yes, new episodes. And that's not including like our Patreon content and any of our video reactions that you would see on our also newly created this year Patreon channel. So in summation, we were busy bees. We were very busy. I'm thinking about it like, we had we we also yeah no i'm sorry we're gonna definitely dive into things but <laughs> i'm proud of us we definitely took advantage yeah toot your own horn you should yeah we took Absolutely. advantage of that's of what the this. queen be does <laughs> <laughs> i think that uh we really like once quarantine kind of hit we were like dang how are we gonna i don't want to say pivot because it wasn't really much of a pivot we just had to hop on zoom but like um, it was just different. Like we had just started with KK&W mm -hmm. and um, we were new to that. And then it was like, oh, now we're going to be doing this remotely. Yeah. Um, and I, mean, I feel like it, it did give us a lot of flexibility. Yeah. And I mean, and also like you guys don't forget, Shantae and I are generally really booked and busy. Like out on a regular year, you know, we've got a lot of stuff going on because we're involved in a lot of different things. So us being able to like take a step back and take a beat and take a, a breath, like that was so refreshing, putting all that time and energy into our craft. So into the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So um, to kind of commemorate the two year anniversary, we thought it would be fun to share some of our faves either of this year of, of the entire two years. So we're going to talk about our favorite guest appearances and our favorite events and all that kind of stuff and just kind of get nostalgic with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to kick it off with our favorite guest appearances. For me, I think um, my favorite guest appearances were going to be uh, Jasmine and Ariel from uh, from the Ujima's Village show. Yes. Um, as well as Jeff and Kevin from the Pick podcast. Um, both of those interviews, I just remember being so much fun and so, like such high energy yes. that like it kind of like that energy like pushed me through my my day, yeah. the rest of my day. Yeah. And um, kind of like when we started this, I think that that was kind of the thing for us is like we want to put our opinions out and like foster bigger conversations. But like really like there are, there are days after we've recorded and I just feel so energized and I'm like, this is why we do this. And this yes. is why I love doing this because it's like, I just want to continue to do it. Like who, who, we, who can we interview next? Yeah. What can we do next? Like, I just want to move off of that uh, momentum. Um, and they were both just a lot of fun to have on the show. No, I agree with that. I, I definitely remember getting off of like both of those interviews and being like one, we feel like that time just like flew by. Like that's how much fun we were right. having. Um, <laughs> And then on top of that, just like what you were saying, yes, the energy, like it's really crazy how a good interview just kind of like 
puts that extra like pep in your step and gets you inspired and these the girls especially jasmine and ariel we've developed like a nice relationship with them after this you know mm -hmm. like that interview really um opened us up to have like a decent relationship with them and they sent us like a goodie box you know we still like talk to each other on the gram and stuff like and that is also to me like kind of like what it's about you know yeah. we've it's not just like a throwaway like oh we got you on the show cool thanks for coming bye like and <laughs> no, when we're they building... blow up when they blow up as far as maybe red carpet then y'all be going and invited and then you know like, hey <laughs> you guys got yeah. your start on our show yeah, <laughs> yeah you know and that's another thing too is they're in uh, south central la like they're not mm -hmm. local right you know? that's a connection that we made in another state that's awesome yeah like, i think that that's a another other point is that like we uh, these two well most of our guests but these two specifically like we didn't know these people prior mm -mm. to having them on and um i think it just says something when you can have somebody on your show and really connect with them like immediately and the As energy strangers. is like yeah like mm. completely flowing like you almost don't even have enough time in the show to like really talk to these people like when we were interviewing jeff and kevin it was like interviewing the old Sorry, older, old, older, older experienced older versions of us. Experience. I just wanted to say they're male versions of us, but they're also older than Seasoned us. Seasoned, so. the older veteran. male versions. Of us. Yes. Sorry, Jeff and Kevin. Come on, um, I'm in their age group. Be careful. I know. I'm sorry, <laughs> but like it was like interviewing us, but like the male versions of yeah. us. And, yeah, yeah, uh, much better. Them being kooks. It was well just played. like really cool to meet them. You know, yeah. It's just like it's so weird how we could never know who these people are have them on the show yeah. and then it's like you're, we're friends now like on a normal day i don't think we'd probably strike up conversations mm -hmm. with these kinds of guys you know like no offense you know but just like they're not our usual demographic or like people that we hang out with right yeah they're and that we have like their stuff uh, with us is very musically related and then with the girls in ujima's village that was very movie related which you guys are also mm -hmm. really in touch with and and mm -hmm, watching right. things online, especially now with what we're doing with staying at home and so forth like that. Or, you know, yeah, place. absolutely. So, yeah, those I, I, I agree with you both. Great, awesome, jam-packed, ener high-energy shows. Technically produced, very <laughs> busy for me, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I also want to say thanks, though, because that's the stuff that I like to do, too. And it's like the back and forth. And when you're all done, you're like, you kind of sit back. You're like... <sighs> Yeah, we did, we did it. it. We yeah, made and then it. You're like, that actually was pretty good. Like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Seize the day, you know? Yeah, I remember that, especially with the episode with Kevin and Jeff. Like, oh, man. Thanks, yeah, thanks for being on top of yeah. that. Oh, Vinny was it's on all good. top of it. All good. It's all of us. Um, for me, my two that I wanted to highlight was Vaughn Reese, a.k.a. our fairy mm -hmm. Vaughn mother. And then Justin Herman, the Roast of the 50 States. And yes. that was a special edition um, episode. But both of those were just, I feel like, memorable for, for different things. Uh, Vaughn, we met through the same collective of people that we know through Summer Splash Fest, which we'll talk more about later and we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. um, but she is an amazing uh, force. Like, she is an entity, yes. I feel like. You know, she herself is just like... In, in, in essence of being it's it's so weird to uh, describe her but she was our very first guest on kknw and we brought her on to kind of help us like mm -hmm. um highlight uh and help us out with our new year's resolutions and making sure that we achieve those goals and those things like that and she is a motivational speaker i believe or um what does what does she do again outside She's of like that? A, coach, a, a life, life coach. coach. Yeah, life yes. coach. Mm -hmm. A motivational speaker and a life coach. And uh, she does a lot of wor amazing work with people that are around our age group um, mm -hmm. and even a little bit younger than us and kind of helps them, I guess, you know, figure out kind of like who they are and embracing who they are and letting them know that it's completely okay to be who they are and how they're feeling about things is okay. And I just... I just love that about her and I love that she challenges us too. She challenges us to look within ourselves Deeper. and and yeah, yeah. And that's something for me that I appreciate because I don't often like challenge myself. So I appreciate I appreciate other people bringing that kind of stuff out of me. What um, I liked about that episode was that um she really got to know us mm -hmm. and like helped us learn more about ourselves in a way of like we took a personality test yeah to kind of see I don't remember like what personality test it was but um we kind of just like learned more about ourselves and 
and it was very interesting because she remembered that stuff and then like I remember one time I put something on my story like I really wish I could get up early and like mm. seize the day you know and like be one of the early birds that gets the worm because I just have this I have struggle getting up in the morning and she messaged me and was like you know remember the personality test that we took you know you're this kind of person if or if getting up in the morning doesn't work for you then don't stress yourself out about trying to make it happen and it really just like resonated with me mm -hmm. because I was like you know because it really doesn't I don't know what it is that I need to do to make that work but like everything that I've tried doesn't and I just wake up in the morning feeling yuck and groggy mm. and I'm like you know what maybe I just need to take her advice and like not one put so much pressure on myself to be that person that I'm not mm. and and two you know what what is early you know like maybe early for me is like 8 a.m even though early for others is like 5 a.m right, and it's like using that time that I am up from like 8 to 12 to really like do what I'm saying like seize that day yeah getting that stuff done and being productive um so yeah I really did appreciate her and like how she really paid attention to detail and took the time to help us understand yeah. ourselves better no and she really does like she'll remember things about you like we see we've seen her since then and you know she because she's still very connected and she's always oh my girl's jazz my girl's tape like it's we love it it's yeah she's, she's amazing <laughs> well we did feature um, her the your guys's debut show last week for the holidays yes, so if anyone that's had right, another guys, chance yes. to listen to it that was a great opportunity yes mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. um and then justin herman um <laughs> this dude like he was again another person who just had great and amazing energy he's somebody who lives in new york he's a, and he's a jewish he, he, he's like a jewish white guy that lives in new york who sometimes happens to write for like black shows like B on bet and stuff like that which is funny you know like he makes a joke of joke about that um, <laughs> But what I really enjoyed about him was that he gave us a really nice, like, comedic relief in a, during a time that was really stressful for a lot of people. Yeah. Like, we were talking to him right around the time of the, uh, the elections and all the preliminary stuff and all the drama around, like, the voting and don't mail in and all that fun stuff. And he was just a really nice, like, change of uh, pace in that, oh, yeah. during that time. And he was also very well informed which made a difference because it's one thing to like be a comedian and make these kinds of jokes, but he was making well-informed jokes. And this special that he did was like the roast of the 50 states. He like did his research and breaking them down. And so when he made these like jokes and whatnot, they, they made a lot of sense. And if you were like from those areas, you would get it. It's just, and it's funny, but he also broke it down in a way that for those who weren't necessarily from those areas could like get it and could still get it and be a part of the joke. And um, I really appreciate it. It made it very relatable, actually, very relatable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We actually, were, we had a conversation. I don't know. We talked to him for like an hour and a half. Like that was mm -hmm. a longer discussion because it, it really did go very, very well. And um, hopefully we can have him back on. Absolutely. He, he had such a breadth of knowledge and experience. And like, yeah, I remember just like, wanting to talk to him about um his directing and everything like he worked for house hunters as well international and yeah i was just like could you just tell us some more about that like we definitely brought you on just to talk about like to bring a comedian like funny side stuff to the election, yeah like, let's hear more about that as well and again it's just a testament to like bringing these people on who are, are multifaceted and they're they're great like yeah. there's just so much more to them and we're learning so much and in, ingraining sorry gaining great relationships as okay. well so shout out to Vaughn shout out to Justin Herman definitely enjoyed both of them now let's talk about some of our favorite events from the last two years yes Shantae um so for me this year I just wanted to touch on this because it was a really awesome opportunity and I feel like we kind of forget it because one this year has flown by yeah. like I feel like just last it was just January um, <laughs> <laughs> um and we've been in the house and like I, it's just hard to remember Excuse all the me. things that have happened. Um, but I really appreciated the Clean Beauty Con um, that we were able to participate in. Yeah. Um, we presented at this Clean Beauty Con. Um, thank you so much, Cassandra, for inviting us. And first of all, 
we're so happy to have met you. One. Yes. <laughs> Two, thank you for inviting us to host or participate in a Clean Beauty Con. Um, and we really hope that this relationship that we formed with you this year also continues to grow because you're just a great person and we really, really value what you're doing with yeah. um, Clean Beauty and really trying to bring awareness to that. Um, I think you've also built a really great community of women who are extremely supportive. And, and we've seen that uh, with the support that we've that we've gained um, from being a part of Clean Beauty Con yes. and stuff like that. No, really, like seriously, that's been an amazing opportunity for us as far as like our growth and like that partnership through Athea Skincare probably would not have happened without her mm -hmm. and, and and that kind of connection. So and <clears throat> I was gonna say something else. Uh, I I remember when we interviewed her this year. Um, she said something about like one of her biggest things is to is empowering other women. You know, empowered women, empowering women, mm -hmm. and um, she truly lives she truly lives that and I appreciate that a lot she um, absolutely does she really does I told her that when we interviewed her but to you know meet her back in like March I think and then you know to see you know how our relationship has grown and just to see her in an action um truly truly lives that and breathes that um I would also say like in overall uh Splash Fest has been my my, my overall favorite yes. event yes in our two years of being a podcast, um, it really showed us what we are able to do. Um, and it also helped us to branch out and meet a lot of really great people who we have stayed connected with. And we've interviewed again this year, like Mariah. Um, and we even met Tiger Lily at Emerald City Gala, but we got to actually interview her this mm -hmm. year. And um, Black, skin. Black Skin. And just, there's just so many people that we're meeting. Um, through you know our friends, yeah, uh, Marshall Law Band. Thank you guys so much for for seeing us putting in work and giving us that opportunity to be at Splash Fest, but also just um, you know I feel like people are about community seriously, and um, Marshall's it really, really shows, about that. You know, it really shows in in the way that we've grown just yeah. from Splash Fest alone. Yeah, Splash Fest really was like. That, that was like when everything kind of like changed for us or like we even kind of changed our mindset about yeah. the podcast yeah. because, you know, he reached out to us on a whim and I, I literally remember us kind of like doing what we were always doing. We were like chilling downstairs, watching something on Netflix and we like got hit up to do it. And I remember we were, we were nervous. We were like, yeah, I was like, no. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you were sure about it, you know? And I just remember me being my, my optimistic self. I was like, you know, it's it, the worst thing, you know, just kind of like, we got to try, you know, I was like, yeah. we got to put it out there. And like, I think I remember Saba was there too. And even Saba was kind of like, I think you guys should do it. Like, you know, give it a shot. And so we, we busted our butt to, to make it happen. And it was a huge learning experience. I think that that's what it is, is that like, you're the optimist where it's like, let's just go and do it. But I'm always thinking about like the logistics, the technicality. And I'm like, I don't think we can do this because in all, if I'm being it honest, mm -hmm. like I'm definitely glad we did Splash Fest and it was a learning curve. Like yes. we learned so much. We I did. want to do another one. Like I'm sad we didn't get to do it this year because I know we could have done it so much better. better. And I think that that's the, re I'm like, eh, cause our first one, there were a lot of little yeah. like things that I just yeah. could not account for. Like, even after we had everything recorded, I was still like, we like, wow, we lost, we lost an, uh, an interview. Yeah. We had gotten like, not necessarily the best mic for the, yeah, for the like situation, the was not good. you know, we had to end up moving. We moved locations yeah. at one yeah. point. Like we just didn't account for like the fact that this is going to be a um what a live event with people literally walking Playing around music. us and sneezing and stuff yo I was the winter like, months yeah that's one of my favorite like we there was this one recording where like all we could hear was like the background conversation and some girl was girl in the sneezing. back talk, she sneezed and then somebody was talking about the winter months <laughs> yeah and i was like yo uh, this is not but, good we cannot use this <laughs> but i will say this you no, know, like even though that was like you know the setup and it was mm -hmm. a little bit of like i don't want to say a mess but like a, people wanted to talk to us a mm -hmm. lot of people really wanted to talk to us they were like oh you're doing interviews you're on a podcast like i don't know what and i think you know we were very cute as well that totally helped but people really <laughs> wanted to interview with us and again like we met i would say i would say at least 
we've met and made like at least 50 plus connections mm -hmm. through through that event. yeah and like and to this to this day you know we still talk to so many of these different people and they're still like incorporating us in in different things and we were in a music video uh for the martial law bands like <laughs> You know, no, like, you know what, what I mean? What was I like? We were in a music video. <laughs> <laughs> like we were. Uh, but again, I don't, none of that would be possible without Summer Splash Fest. Absolutely. So we're going to kill it come 2021. I'm ready. Um, Let's go ahead and hop into a, oh, wait, Jazz, you, you tell yours. I feel like, oh, yeah, we have to touch on this one real quick. Yeah. So the Emerald City, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Ceiling Gala. <laughs> the Emerald City Gala. So this was kind of like our second uh, event with um, the Marshall Law Band and like through Summer Splash Fest. This was like something that they put on in December and it was actually like a music fundraiser to help those that are experiencing homelessness in mm -hmm. Seattle. So um, they went out and they actually played music like in Pioneer Square and gave out like food bags and like socks and things like that. And doing really the good work um but this event was amazing um, we had all kinds of same of the same like artists that we met at splash fest mm -hmm. they took over numos the runaway and barboza in capitol hill to host this event that's how big it was they had to have three different stages and um it was a red carpet event or i guess you could say a green carpet event it was a red carpet oh yeah that's right my bad <laughs> it was a red carpet event and you know they had a limo set up for us like only a few select people got to go hang out in this special like bar down the street we had some drinks took some pictures hopped in a limo and got shuttled to numos and had this whole little moment of like getting out of the car feeling like superstars totally. um and it was awesome you know it was an excuse for us to get dressed up which we love but also we were able to work at the same time we um, had a videographer with us that time, Lex Scope, who shouts out to you. We met you through the podcast. Um, and Sorry, we met you through Summer Splash Fest and the Martial Law Band. <laughs> um, and we were able to conduct even more interviews and we met even more people that day. Mm -hmm. I think that was when we actually officially met Black Skin. Yeah, that was, was at when the we Emerald met City him. Gala. Yeah. yeah, and Campana was there. Mm -hmm. and it was a big and beautiful event. Again, like shouts out to Marshall and Martial Law Band. Like so much of this is because of you guys. Thank you for always thinking of us and including us. Now we can jump into our two to three minute break. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. You guys are listening to The Way with Jazz and Tay. Heavy is my crown. Welcome back to The Way with Jazz and Tay. It's your girl, Shantae. And Jazz, men. And before the break. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing full names. <laughs> uh, before the break, we kicked off our, you know, commemoration of our two year anniversary. We talked about um, our favorite guests and shows and our favorite events. Now we're gonna talk about what we're looking forward to in 2021. Um, more life, more money. You know, that's mainly it. For major real. keys alert. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm I'm personally looking forward to bringing back guests from the past um, this past season, this past year. Um, I don't know, you know, those people that we identified as our favorites. I think that they would be great places to start. But just kind of filling out our uh, listeners and seeing like who should we bring back. And um, even just like new guests, like I think having guests is a lot of fun mm -hmm. and I love meeting new people and getting their perspective on some of the topics that we talk about. Absolutely. Um, and then a continued growth and, and to see where it goes from here. Um, one, I'm really just excited to see like when will the country open back up? Mm -hmm. And like, when will we start to see some kind of normalcy? Cause I would really like to see us do like a live tour 
or at least one yeah. in Seattle. Yeah. But right now, that's not really a possibility if we if we stay on lockdown. Not so <laughs> that's something that I would love to see in 2021, but I can't like say that for sure because of everything that's going on. Um, I'm looking forward to like, as far as the podcast goes, more partnerships and hopefully a like sponsorship. Um, maybe even a grant or two. That would be dope. That's something that I know we're um, trying to focus on going into 2021, um, as well as getting our LLC and establishing ourselves as a business because, you know, we're bosses. (laughs) (laughs) Um, As well as like growing our Patreon um, and our overall listeners and downloads, you know, like we have a good thing going we get consistent um positive feedback and it's just a matter of making sure that we're getting it out to the masses um adding patreon this year was a really great idea and we're really excited to kind of like focus more on marketing that and advertising that in next year so i'm excited to see how that takes off um and then being able to delegate some of our needs like I'm ready to pass off some of this work. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Where are my assistants? You know, right. <laughs> Somebody. I'll okay. be in my trailer. I am weak. <laughs> um, what are some lessons that we've learned, Tay? Um, it's funny. One of the lessons I've learned is outsourcing work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we started outsourcing like our video mm-hmm. editing for the podcasts to um, a guy named Ishmael, who we've we've had on. We've, mm-hmm. uh, Studio we're on a 143. Great relationship with. He's awesome. He's one of, I feel like he's one of our biggest supporters. Yeah. And, um, and it's just shown us like kind of what, what other things we could outsource and like how that could help us. Um, we don't have to do everything. You know, we could just be the face. And that's one thing that I've learned. Um, sometimes spending a lot of money on things you really need pays off in the long Mm -hmm. run and like obviously we all know that but before this year we did not have um studio equipment like we do now and if you can see our setup we Mm -hmm. have two mics we have a mixer i have a new computer we have a ring light like it's an entire production at this point at that um and I think that that's really one been one of the driving forces as to why we were able to really continue to push out all this quality content yeah. this year. Um, because honestly, when they were like, you guys have to work remotely, I was like, we don't even have a good mic for right. this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not the way. So it was like a little bit scary there for a second, but we just b- bit the bullet and we, you know, put the money into getting the equipment and, you know, it, it's worked out for the best because now yeah. we can use this for other stuff we can travel with this stuff like it's just a better setup like we could use this for a splash fest next time right it's definitely equipment that's gonna work definitely beneficial for sure all righty guys let's go ahead and do a recap a lot of this is going to be the way just a heads up (laughs) spoiler alert (laughs) um our our holidays and family and josie Always going to be the way. Slip in Josie way. right there. And Josie. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> Always going to be the way. Um, our icebreaker, heads up 2020. That's the way. You know, I am I am definitely trying to end 2020 on this positive tip. So let's I say. I mean, it's today. Right. So. You know, let me just have a good day today. Um, our taking a look back, fave interviews and favorite events. Definitely definitely the way i don't think we've had a bad interview yet that would be interesting ooh, ooh, ooh. we've had I'm some nervous. awkward like i would say the one with uh i forgot his name the british guy yeah guzzy guzzy thank you i was like, <laughs> and i was like i know that's not it guzzy that one was awkward yeah. only because we were on like completely opposite ends of the spectrum which on is, what we were talking about which is great yeah, but it was awkward definitely because i was like ooh, i could feel less getting heated about some of the yeah, stuff he's saying. Yeah. And I was like, just keep it cool, girl. Right, keep right. it cool. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. This, <laughs> right, right. this has been so much fun. Right. <laughs> Won't be talking to you anymore. <laughs> Joking. But... Smile for it. Then... <laughs> Smile right. for it. <laughs> right. And then what we're looking forward to in 2021, definitely the way. Let's manifest that. Absolutely. We got big things coming and I'm I'm excited about it. You guys should hit us up on Instagram at The Way Jazz and Tay and let us know what your favorite moments were, your favorite guest appearances and mm-hmm. episodes, and what you are most for uh, looking forward to in 2021 from The Way with Jazz and Tay. Um, 
outside of that, I think that's. I know that's it. That's Thank it. you guys so much for rocking with us. It's been a wonderful ride. As always, thank you so much for tuning into The Way. Catch you next week, same time, same place. Follow us on Instagram at The Way Jazz and Tay and on Twitter at The Way JT. Don't be afraid to DM us if you have any questions or suggestions about the show. Until next time, bye. Peace.